Um, right, first one, maybe, maybe I can get the first one. Negative 143 plus 33x equals 9x minus 23. Um, subtract 9x. Add 143. 24x equals 120, so x equals 5. Right there. And the second one, beautiful. Oh, is this icy hot? Oops. 36x equals negative 72. So x equals negative 2. Any questions? Hoping you guys can do those. Great. So we're going to talk about, today should be pretty easy. Um, if we don't finish today, because at the end of class, you know it's a short period today, and we have to do our pre-test today, it's a whole 12 questions at the end of class, the last 15 minutes. Okay? So it's stuff that we're supposed to learn this quarter. So it's 12 questions, whew, multiple choice. It's not the grade on the test. It's improvement between pre and post. Oh, cool. Does that make sense? Okay. So at the end of the term, we'll do a post test, similar questions, see how much you've improved. Okay. So, um, so I would never grade you on a pretest on stuff that you don't know. Cool. Why would I grade you on stuff you don't know? That's mean and cruel like and unusual. I'm not that mean. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we're going to start talking about polynomial functions today. First couple lessons are pretty easy. Then it gets a little more difficult, just so, you're, just so you guys know, okay? And we are going to graph polynomials. Yeah, without calculators. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a polynomial is a mathematical expression of one or more algebraic terms in which each consists of constant multiple... Uh, of a constant multiplied by one or more variables raised to a non-negative integral power. So poly means more, many, wow. Nomials mean terms. So we have examples of polynomials and non-polynomials over here. So anything to a negative exponent is not a polynomial. Anything with an x squared or where the x is not in the denominator, not a polynomial. Anything else? Yes. Yeah, honey, you need to pick up the packet at the front of the classroom. Okay, um, the standard form starts with the highest exponent and then just goes down to the constant. So this one here would be in standard form because x to the fourth is the highest and x cubed, x squared, x, and then no x. Um, factored form, just kind of like a quadratic, factored form is the same um, as a quadratic because a quadratic is a polynomial, just degree two. Okay. Any questions so far? The vocabulary is pretty simple. Degree is the largest exponent. The, uh, the largest exponent the variable has in a polynomial with one variable. So <clears throat> I know there's a picture in here with more than one variable. We're not really going to talk about that one. If we look at this one, it has x cubed, so it's a third degree because it's the highest degree. You need to pick that up, honey. This one's a second degree because it has an x squared. First degree because it has an x to the first power. You guys all need to get that packet. Those are the notes. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. Um, hopefully you all know what a term is. If you guys are walking in and not getting your packet of notes, you need to make sure you grab that. Okay. So a term is the same thing. It's each individual. I'm not going to read the definitions. Sorry, you guys can read them. Each term is separated by a, a plus or a minus sign or an equal sign. So it's each individual one is a term. Um, coefficient is the one that we're going to use a lot. So the coefficient is the number with the variable. It does not include the variable, just the number with the variable. Um, and then it's also... Um, the leading term is the one with the highest um, exponent. So in this example right here, it would be 4. 4 would be my leading coefficient and my leading term. Okay, 
Those are um, mostly vocabulary we're gonna use when we start getting to graphing. And the most common polynomials we have are degree one, two, three. Uh, we may do some, when we start dividing, yeah, we're gonna do long division. We'll get to some fourth degree polynomials, okay? Um, but most of the time we're gonna deal with third degree polynomials. If we get anything bigger than that, we'll probably use our calculator to graph with. Okay, any questions? Not too bad vocabulary-wise. Sorry, I'm trying to go a little faster because we have a limited time today. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, yes? No? Add and subtract. So how do we add, subtract polynomials? Anybody have any idea how I would add and subtract? Number one, actually, it's just add. What am I going to do? You multiply 6x by 4x. Am I going to multiply? Add. Add. Why add? Because, yeah, because there's an add sign between the things. So I'm just going to add my common, uh, my like terms. So 6x plus 4x is 10x, and 3 plus 5 is 8, and that's it. So it's just com like combining like terms. That's it. So adding, subtracting, same thing. I just have to pay attention to what's in between my parentheses. So the second one, um, I'm going to distribute this negative. So I can think of the second one two different ways. I can distribute the negative if I want, or I can know that it's 3x minus 2x, which would be negative 5x, and negative 1 minus 5, which would give me negative 6, yeah. Okay, or you can rewrite it. So some people can see it that way, or you could rewrite it as negative 3x minus 1 minus 2x minus 5, and then you get the same result this way. I don't care which way you do it, whichever way it helps you see it better. Okay? And then it's the same if I have more than two terms in my expression. So I'm going to subtract again. So I can distribute this through and say this is a negative, this is a negative, and this is a plus. So 5x squared minus 3x squared gives me 2x squared, and 7x minus 6 gives me, and 2 minus 2 gives me 0. zero. And there's my answer for number 3. So I want you to go ahead and do A, B, and C, please. Okay, someone tell me the answer to number A. 5x plus 1. Anybody disagree? You, oh, you said plus 1? Yeah. Thank you. I'm like, hold on. Okay, number B. 18x plus 12. Beautiful. And number C. Ooh. So how many cubes are on there? There's only one cube. So it should be 7x cubed. How many squares? Three. So negative, good, negative 3x squared. How many x's? Six. Because this minus changes this to a plus, and I get 3x plus 3x. And then how many units? Negative 18. Beautiful. Okay. Questions? Everyone okay in that? Make sure it's like terms. Okay. Good job. Um, oh, you got four more to go. Yay. I know. Shoot. Okay. Well, let me get those two in on the recording there because I forgot to push play. <laughs> Okay, uh, 7x to the 4th plus x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x minus 12. Okay, what did you guys get for G? Negative 2. Negative 2. Who did not get negative 2? Who does not know why it's not negative 2? Because I know I saw several different answers on your guys' page on this one. But x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is zero, right? And then negative one minus one is 
This is a subtract sign, not an add sign, so it's negative 2. Okay? So I. So on this one, just I'm just going to set the first one up. So if you didn't still didn't quite understand, this is how I did it and, and how it kind of made sense to me. So h minus k, I just wrote it out. I said h is 4x squared minus x minus 15, and then minus k, negative x squared plus 7x plus 4. And once I wrote it out, it's just like the top four, right? So if you write it out that way, actually write out the problem instead of trying to do it in your head. And now it's just like the top four. Does that make sense? And then you get, uh, what did I get? 5x squared minus 8x minus 19. So, okay, questions? Okay, so what about 2? Anybody get 2? That's double I. Double I. It's a Roman numeral 2. In lowercase. <laughs> it's lowercase, it's not Roman numeral. <laughs> x cubed plus 6x squared minus 8x minus 23. I can't read my writing, but I'm pretty sure it says x cubed plus 2x squared. Minus 3x minus 1. Is that what you guys got? So he definitely didn't finish it yet. And 4 is uh, what? Negative x to the cubed minus 3x squared plus 14x plus 12. By the way, you guys, I do make mistakes. So please, if you catch me, let me know. Thank you. Make mistakes all the time. That's the answer for four? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm just not going to show my work. Okay. It's fine. Okay with that. As long as you know how to do it. Okay, awesome. Okay, you know how to do it? Awesome. <laughs> okay, now we're going to move on to multiplication. Um, right, we just have a little note here uh, when we're de dealing with exponents, right? If I have the same base... Uh, what do I do to the exponents? You add them together, right? So um, when I'm multiplying. Would 2x times 5x squared be x cubed? The x cubed would be x cubed. The x cubed, that is correct. It would be x cubed because 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay. Right? So this would actually be 10x cubed plus 14x, right? I'm distributing 2x. Okay. And then what happens when you distribute a negative 1? Everything turns negative. Everything changes signs. It doesn't always become negative. Because if it's already negative, it becomes positive. So it just changes signs, right? Opposite. Yep, opposite. So I get negative x squared plus 4x minus 8. And then multiply by 9x, so I'm going to get negative 9x cubed minus 27x. Beautiful. Okay, so three, go. A, B. Wow, B, C, and D. Oh, I got nothing. I just decided not to do B. Wow, okay. What did somebody get for B? Anybody? And then, uh, negative x Square cubed okay. plus x minus x. X squared, good. Yes. It's plus x squared. Yeah, good. And number C. Ooh. Yeah. Yes, very good. Nice job, you guys. And number D. Anybody? Um, 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 6x 
of the fifth, subtract three x to the fourth plus twelve x to the third. Very good. Questions, anybody? Everyone okay on multiplying just a single, distributing a single digit, right? So our last page is actually multiplying binomials, trinomials, okay? So um, we're going to look at one first. And there's a couple different ways you can multiply, right? I can FOIL. Who knows what FOILing is? I know that some of you said FOIL on the Kahoot, right? Where you take this one and multiply by it, this and this one, right? And this one times this. And you can do that. That's great. There are other methods. And if you want to multiply that way, great. That's awesome. Okay? But there are other ways to multiply that you can um, organize a little better, I guess, would say, would be to say. And, um, and you probably did it like in seventh and eighth grade, and people don't remember how to do it. But it kind of organized, especially once you get bigger than a two by two, right? A binomial times a binomial. So I always like... And I'm going to say this. When we start doing long division, if you can do it this way, it makes long division so much easier. So I have x squared plus 5x minus 6 and x to the fourth plus 2x. Basically, I made a multiplication table, right? It will organize your data in nice rows and columns, usually. I want to say that, usually. So it's just a multiplication table. x to the fourth times x squared is x to the 6th, x to the 4th times 5x is 5x to the 5th, and negative 6x to the 4th, huh? Isn't it called like lattice math? No, no, Probably. No, something, like something, yeah. I just call it a multiplication table. Isn't that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. 2x times x squared is 2x to the cube. They're always trying to come up with new names for old stuff. 5x times 2x is 10x squared, and then I get negative 12x, right? And in this one, there's no like terms at all. So my answer is just going to be x to the 6 plus 5x to the 5th minus 6x to the 4th plus 2x cubed plus 10x squared minus 12x. So there's my answer for this problem. Yes, always standard form is highest exponent to lowest exponent. Okay? So if I'm doing, um, if my exponents are the similar, like x squared plus x squared, x, and no variable, if it was the same on this one, you'd have the boxes with the like terms would line up. And I'll show you in a few minutes. Because the next one doesn't do the same thing. Does the same thing also. Okay, so you can multiply that way. It kind of makes it a little neater. You don't have all these weird things all over the place. Sarah Fetzer. There's a delta math, by the way. It's not nearly as many problems. Yes, I will sign your tracker. Okay, can you guys please do number two while I sign Sarah's tracker? I hope you can multiply. Okay. Dentist. Have fun. I She's know. like, thanks. Thanks, Miss Campbell. <laughs> so because this one is a three by three, I'm just gonna make my multiplication chart this time a three by oops. If I can draw a straight line. I can't really, but we're gonna pretend I can. Right? I should have did this one a different way. I think I am going to do this one a different way. Sorry. You guys don't have to. You can do it that way. That's fine. You can still do it that way, right? 
I'm just going to do it this way and try and line up my like terms. So I've got negative 3x to the 8th uh, plus 6x to the 5th. Beautiful. And plus 15x to the 4th. And then I've got, oh, I should have left room in here, um, x to the 7th. And that's a negative 2x to the 4th, negative 2x to the 4th, and negative 5x cubed. And then we've got um, 5x to the 5th minus 10x squared and minus 25x. So this time all I did was kind of line up my like terms. Uh, Deshaun, hen, there's a the note packet right there. So now I can just add down. So I've got negative 3x to the 8th plus x to the 7th plus 11x to the 5th um, plus 13x to the 4th minus 5x cubed minus 10x squared minus 25x. Yeah. There's my answer. Okay? So... Either way you want to do it, if you did the box method, you should still, the multiplication table method, you should have still got the same answer. Just some of the boxes would have been like terms. Okay? The box method is a little more compact than this, right? So. And then we have the last one. Any ideas on how to do number three? What do you guys think? That's a, um, that's a polynomial 3D. Yeah? And? How am I going to multiply it? You should x times x and x times x. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take... I'm going to multiply these two together first and get an answer and then multiply my third one times it. Okay. So I'm going to multiply these together. So I've got x times x is, and x times negative 1 is, 4 times x, and then 4 times negative 1, negative 4, x squared plus 3x minus 4 times x minus 6. And then I'm just going to do this one. So I've got x squared 3x minus 4 and x minus 6. So x squared times x is x cubed. x times 3x is 3x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Negative 6x squared. Negative 18x and 24. Now if you look on my diagonals um, are my like terms. So these are my like terms I'm going to add together. So I've got x cubed, negative 3x squared, minus 22x plus 24. And there's your answer. Whew. Questions? Not too bad. You guys should have done this. I mean, it's been a while. Since yeah. you've done a three by, a, a, you know, I've three. Always, a binomial times a binomial times a binomial. It was always just x plus four plus right. times x minus two. Right. Two. So a binomial times a binomial. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's, now you've got bigger. Now we're adding steroids to the bit. Yes. So you've got six problems in ten minutes. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> so try... Yeah, so basically ACT time, if you guys want to know that, right? This is ACT time.
Bless you. Fifty-four. No, that trick, right? No, I've never did that. I learned that like four years ago. I love that trick. <laughs> Put down the six-figure. Fifty-four. x to the fourth plus 7x cubed plus x squared x minus 4. My slant, my writing's going downhill now. And then minus 56x cubed and 66x squared minus 118x plus 20. That last one was rough.